What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 71 of the Rise to Glory here with Gibraltar Apex and today we continue on with our Champions League campaign. We are now in the group stage. We're taking on Benfica away for today's live commentary. It's going to be a pr tricky game. We are yet to play the Portuguese Giants Benfica and I know that I do have quite a few Portuguese viewers. I'm sure some of them are Porto fans, some of them are sporting fans and some of them are Benfica fans. I'm hoping in I'm hoping that those who support Benfica can put things aside for this game. It should be a fun one. Um, and of course, I'm sure you Porto fans are going to want to see me try and get a win. So I'm going to do my best. I mean, I'm sorry, Benfica fans, but I'm going to try. Anyway, let's have a look at today's game. There has only been one match since the last live com. It was a 5-1 win against Gibraltar Lions in the Pepe Reyes Cup. And when you see that, you probably think, great convincing win. 5-1, easy. Nah, it wasn't. It really wasn't. This game, we were 1-0 down at half-time. And I absolutely bollocked the players. I shouted at them. I screamed. I threw I threw water bottles at them. I threatened them at gunpoint. And they went out in the second half and scored five. So that went pretty well. Uh, it was good. We were refereed by unknown. I assume that's the Pokemon. I'm not sure what letter unknown it was. But either way, it was a good win. Great win. And that is, as I mentioned, the only game going into this Benfica game. So it's going to be a slightly shorter game today and shorter episode. In terms of the team... We kind of look pretty good. I managed to sort out the registration, which is nice. We've got a pretty nice, strong team at our disposal. In terms of the team for today's game, uh, in goal, of course, we have Italo, the Brazilian beast. Between the sticks, the Bayern Munich loanee. At left back, we go with John Flanagan on loan from Newcastle United. A great player to have. More of a natural right back, but can play left back, and that is where he's going to be playing today for us. Alongside him in the defence, we have Melvin Thomas at left centre-back. The Canadian has improved a lot in recent years. He's looking like a very good player. Great physically, great in terms of his mentals, quite a smart player. Um, I only wish really that his acceleration was a little bit better and perhaps his heading in kind of overall aerial ability was slightly better. But he makes a good for a good centre-back and he's going to be a good player for us today. Alongside him, we have another one of his North American counterparts, Jeff Brown. On loan from Norwich City, this guy, a great centre-back, good decisions, pretty good in the air, this guy, compared to a lot of our other players. Again, perhaps I could do with better defenders, but I think he does a job for us, and I think he's hopefully going to put in a good performance for us today. At right back, we go with Callum Patterson on loan from Southampton. I must admit, there is a little bit of a dependency on loans in the defensive department, but I'm hoping that these kind of mercenaries are going to serve us well. As you can see, our back five, including our goalkeeper, Melvin Thomas, is the only permanent player there for us. Anyway, looking higher up into the midfield, at left mid, we of course go with Paul Smith, the Australian. He's still improving, he still looks great, the 20-year-old, still playing in the Australia national team. The fans love him, he's consistent, he's improving a lot. I'm hoping he can keep improving, he's a great player out there. On the right, we go with Aaron McVitty, who already has six goals in the Champions League. Really has been a, a big performer, perhaps didn't turn up quite so much against Zagreb. Very much relied on our strikers in those games, but regardless... Hopefully he can put in a good performance there. Centre of midfield, relatively unchanged. We go with Manuel Cruz and Bouchard in the midfield. Manuel Cruz, a very intelligent centre mid, I think it's fair to say. Good decisions, great physically as well. Makes for a really good kind of rock in the midfield and helps to cover uh, for Joe Bouchard here, the other centre mid. The Canadian is still yet to play for the Canada national team, which quite frankly is a joke. Hopefully he will get that call up soon, or I guess... Hopefully he won't, because it would be quite nice if he was to play for Gibraltar, although he's still got another three-plus years uh, in the nation to reside before he could ever play for the national team, so that's not looking entirely likely. Anyway, looking at our strike partnership, we go with the JJ partnership. It's going to be Jair and Jackson. Jair, the Brazilian, already kind of done great in this competition. Five goals in four appearances and one appearance off the bench. And alongside him, we, of course, go with Sean Jackson, a player who's been at the club a while, does have a release clause in his contract, which he just doesn't want to get rid of, which has always been a pain. I've tried offering him a new deal, and he's happy to take one, but he still wants a minimum release clause of £10,000. And, well, perhaps it's not worth giving him a pay rise if he wants to increase his release fee by £6,000, especially with him having three years left on his contract. So anyway, that's the team for today's game. We're, of course, going to be playing the 4-4-2 count. So we go into the Champions League with not much in the way of expectation, I guess. Benfica were the highest seedest highest seeded team I do believe in this so it's not going to be an easy match of course I want to get a win in the Champions League this year that's got to be the aim the first time we were in the Champions League we actually got two points last year we got zero I'm hoping that this year you know we can try and get that win we can try and at least break the three points mark 
Perhaps this isn't the game I expect to do it in, but it's a game that we've got to go into and really give it our best shot. Benfica playing at home, the Portuguese side, they're going to have that home advantage. They are, as I mentioned, the highest seeded team in the group. They've performed very well in recent years. They've got players you might recognise, like Andre Kubas, the Argentine wonder could set defence in mid. But you know what? We'll see what we can do here. And actually, we're on the attack. Jair yeah, Bouchard. Options out on the right. That's McVitty. Crosses it in. Smith. Oh, that was an opportunity. A real chance. Eight minutes in and we get the first clear-cut chance of the game, but we squander it. Well, that's frustrating, isn't it? It was Paul Smith, the left mid, cutting inside. And, well, he just hit it straight at the keeper, really. I mean, after 20 minutes, though... Still defending okay. I say this, maybe I'm about to jinx it, but we've not conceded yet. We seem to be putting up some pretty stiff resilience. Benfica are dominating possession, but they've not scored. I mean, they're having quite a few chances now, but as I said, they've not scored. We're doing okay here. We can get to half-time. Fantastic. I might even, might even be slightly tempted to play on attacking. Although, the longer this game goes on, kind of the, the more... I expect perhaps Benfica to get a little bit angsty, you know. They could be a little bit desperate to try and get a win there. That's expected of them here, you know. They're going to throw more men forward. Overall, a good team talk there, trying to, kind of trying to encourage the players in the second half. We had a chance to take the lead in this game, and while we didn't take it, did we? Paul Smith has made a lot of mistakes. He certainly has assistant. He certainly has missed that clear-cut opportunity for us. 35 minutes left of this game, though, to be honest. I was about to say, I take it, but, well, Benfica on the attack. They've heard that I'd be quite happy with the result, and now they want to, I guess, compound my misery as the ball is being probed around the edge of the box. Kubas tries to get it in. Patterson with the initial clinch. Why is there no one at right back? Kubas now with the ball. Switches it. Taliska. Lou. Don't commit a foul, whatever we do. Allen. Options on ahead. Cuts it inside to Carney. What a block that was. Let's not get the cross come in here. John Flanagan. I can't work out if that was a great strategic foul or a reckless tackle through the back of his man. It was a reckless tackle through the back of his man. He's got red carded. That's not what we wanted. Oh, dear. Johnny boy. What, what has happened there? What has happened? Gier has not had a very good game here. So I'm going to make a change. We've got quite a few bookings here. Fortunately, we have got Marriott on the bench. I'm also going to make another change. I'm going to bring in JJ at centre mid. Uh, and then we're going to play like this, I think. I think we have to, don't we? I do have another sub, and with half an hour left, I, I really want to take off one of the kind of booked wingers, but I guess we're just going to have to go with the double change for now. would like to hold on to my other change if possible. Really, now, this is going to be a tough ask for us. We've done so well in this game so far to limit Benfica, but now, that I mean, this is a whole other task for us, isn't it? 20 minutes we have to hold on with 10 men. John Flanagan... Not having a debut to remember, I think it's fair to say. McVitie flicking on the ball. He's got no one to aim for. A big ball up front. Hits the crossbar and then Italo grabs it. I mean, that looked very weird in 2D, if I'm honest. Again, Marriott just being boxed in. Brown heads it away. Bouchard, McVitie. Can we look for the big ball? I mean, Jackson's fast, but he's got to start trying to make a run in behind for McVitie just to lump it up to him. Bouchard has the right idea. But Benfica now with the ball and, well... The more that they have the ball, the more worried I get. They're committing a lot of men forward in the attack now, Benfica, as you'd expect them to be, really. And they are going to find the back of the net, finally. 75 minutes in it took them. 75 minutes. We held on for so long. That red card really did screw us. It was a straight red as well. I can't even really kind of blame myself for it because I just didn't see it coming. Flanagan, he's been brought in, the experienced fullback, to, you know, add experience, literally in the... T clue is in the kind of siding I've brought him in to be and he really has had a, a rush of blood to his head there and it's looking like it's probably going to cost us we've got to go on the attack now that's the worst thing about this all I am going to stay on counter however we are going to look to kind of attack with some more attackingly minded uh, roles throughout the team I'm also going to bring on Carlos Silva for um, McVitie going to make our last change get on some fresh legs in the wings Maybe we can try and hit them on the break. I mean, it's going to be a big ask now. The more we go in the attack as well, of course, the more susceptible we are going to be to Benfica's attacks. And they are bringing the ball forward here. Allen down the right-hand side, crosses it into Carnu. Rinaldi, he's just free in the box. I mean, it's it's an amateur error. It comes, I guess, as a result of us going so attacking. And having held on for 75 minutes, we can see two goals in two minutes. And that red card has just screwed us. It really has. To play with 10 men, even in, in a game when you're expected to win, is tough. To go down to 10 men in a game where really you are relying on a, 
a standout defensive performance by the entire team. They've all got to rally together and kind of work together. To lose a man in that kind of situation, I mean, it's not exactly surprising, is it, that we've gone down here 2-0 and we are going to lose here 2-0. I mean, it's not a bad performance, perhaps some food for thought going into the next few games. Arsenal is the next high. That will be a live com as well. I want to tell the boys they were unlucky tonight. I mean, we've lost 2-0, but I really can't fault anyone but Joe, uh, Joe, John Flanagan for that. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, we do lose our opening game. Arsenal winning through an Odegaard goal. Looks like he's developed fairly well on this save. We're going to have a tr tough time, I imagine, shutting him down in the next leg. Anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up this episode from me. A disappointing episode, a shorter episode. There's going to be a, no a few more shorter ones, obviously, as we go through these group stage games. I'm a little bit heartbroken to get beaten in the manner we did. Hopefully we can get our chins up for episode 72. It's going to be a tricky game against Arsenal. Another team that we are yet to play in this save, but hopefully a team that we can perhaps cause an upset against. Hopefully I'll see you guys for that one. If you have enjoyed this episode, as always smash the like button. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. And yeah, thank you for watching as always, guys. It is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.